You won't believe how my Grinch themed DIYs turn out today. They all turn out really pretty good, but this is on myself. And if you're a fan of the movie, then great, this video's for you. If you're not, I, then I was thinking to myself just now, well, if they're not, <laughs> you still may enjoy the video, so just keep watching. On this channel, I love sharing easy DIYs and budget home decor. And if we haven't met yet, my name is Lisa, and this is our gray house. We are kicking off DIY number one by painting these three jumbo craft sticks front and back with folk art matte paint in the color citrus green. And we'll take another three jumbo craft sticks and we are going to use Waverly wax in the color antique to stain the front and back. Now I normally paint it on and then wipe it off with a damp cloth, but for this I'm just wiping it on with a damp cloth and it dries pretty quickly. And now that both sets are dry, I'm using some painter's tape to attach them together. And I figure out how long I want them to be and then I cut them off. And I'm using those cutoff pieces and hot gluing them to the back to hold them together and to stabilize them. And for the Grinch's face, I penciled in first and then I used a black, a black paint pen to go over it. Now my paint pen seemed drier so I've done to mess with them, but it comes out fine. And I used a yellow paint pen to fill in the eyes. And for Max's face, and if you didn't know, that is the name of the Grinch's dog, I basically do the same thing. I use a black paint pen to paint on the face. And after the yellow paint is dry, I take a black paint pen and make the eyes. And for Max's eyes, I use a white pen, paint pen to make those little dots. And I didn't show this part, but I cut out the Grinch's hat out of cardboard, just a general shape, similar to the one that you're gonna see later on in this video. And I'm painting it with Waverly chalk paint in the color crimson. And for Max's antler, I also cut it out of cardboard and I'm painting it with folk art matte paint in the color starlight gold. And I cut out the ear shape again out of cardboard and painted it brown. And once they were dry, I hot glued them to Max's head. I'm going to attach the cardboard hat to the Grinch's head with hot glue and then, and I need to add some fluff to the hat of course, so I had some pom pom balls and I cut one in half, it didn't hold together like I thought it would, and it got a little messy, so I tried to clean that up as best as I could and I did add a whole pom pom to the tip of his hat. Max's ears are on, but he needs his antlers, so I attached that to the top of his head with hot glue. Here's how DIY number one turned out, and they are both so cute. They're simple to make and super budget friendly. In fact, the total cost, not including the paint as I always have that on hand, was less than a dollar. I got a 30 pack of the craft sticks at Lowe's and they were $1.98 and the cardboard was left over from a box. You can't get much cheaper than that. This video is part of a playlist. It's the five under $5 DIY challenge. It's a monthly challenge that's hosted by Missy from Crafty Co DIY, Emily from Farm Charm Chic. The guest host this month is Sharon from Grace's Neighbor Sharon. I'm gonna have a link to the playlist as well as to the host in the description box below. You'll wanna check it out because all these DIYs are gonna be Christmas or winter themed. All right, back to the DIYs. I found this honeycomb shaped sign at Dollar Tree and I used a combination of my heat gun, my little spatula thingy, and my little blade thing to carefully pry off the frame that was on it. And I wanted to remove the paper that was on there so I got a wet washcloth and I let it soak for a bit on the sign. And the paper came off pretty easily with that scraper tool thing. I don't know what you call that, that blade thing. And then I painted the entire sign with Waverly chalk paint in the color white. And this particular paint is really thick. It's like pudding almost like consistency. So I did use a little bit of water to thin it out just a bit. Citrus green is going to be the Grinch color of the day. And I actually Googled what color to use for the Grinch. And I saw citron green, lime green, parakeet, bright green. So I had some citrus green on hand and it looked good to me. So I went with that. And as you just saw, I put the frame on there to kind of show where to paint it. But I go back with painter's tape later to mark it off so it's a, a cleaner line. and I did cut out these decals using my Cricut and I used the font Green Eggs and Spam and I think I got that from defont.com and I also think I made this a bit harder than I needed to. You know, like in your mind, it'll work out one way, but in actual real life, not so much. <laughs> so you'll see what I'm talking about. But as an example, I used permanent vinyl instead of removable. So there's that. 
And the first part of this works okay. I use the vinyl as a stencil and I stipple it on on that crimson red and citrus green paint. Seems pretty straightforward and obviously the supervisor on duty wasn't doing actual quality control because it took a good amount of picking at it and me trying to be careful not to nick the wood too much and to get all that permanent vinyl off. Uh, anyway, normally I either put down a thin layer of Mod Podge or a thin layer of the base color so that'll help it not bleed and have a crisp stencil, but yeah, this was a little frustrating and I'm glad I didn't put down any extra stuff that's gonna make it stick more. And I'm just repeating the process on the other side. I have these little sponge brushes that I got from Hobby Lobby and I like them a bit better than the ones that I got from Dollar Tree because I feel like they're denser and if you don't have either of, of those sponges, um, I know some DIYers use makeup st uh, sponges to stencil that as well. And again, I have the same issues removing the permanent vinyl as you see me doing here. And at the bottom here, this is supposed to be like an on off button. And I left the letters on there because I wanted them to be white and the green dot I covered with a dot that I made with my Cricut. But for this stencil, for the button part, I was supposed to weed the inside out and instead I weeded the outer vinyl. You know, and I couldn't believe that. I, I was just getting so frustrated. I'd used permanent vinyl to begin with. Crafting's supposed to be fun. But um, anyway, so I used the shape and I traced around and I used my larger sponge brush to fill in the space. And because the lines weren't super crisp, I went back in with a detail brush to try to clean that up a bit. And because I had used that permanent vinyl, the letters messed up a little bit. <sighs> Just insert heavy sigh there, y'all. I painted the outer frame with folk art chalk paint in the color rich black. And I don't show this on camera, but I actually go back and paint all the way around the outer rim of the sun with the rich black as well. And I wanted to show y'all, I don't always use my Cricut for my projects. And if you don't have one, don't let that stop you from creating. I just took a pencil and I rubbed it all over the back of this Grinch face that I printed out. And I'm gonna use that to trace on the face. And you could also use graphite paper. You could use carbon paper. You have options, y'all. And so I place that face where I want and I use my pencil to trace it. And then I go back with a black paint pen and go over those lines. It's very easy to do. But if you have a steady hand, you could actually like use a detail brush or something. Now my paint pens are a bit on the drier side, like I've already said, so I feel like I have to work with them a bit more, but they, you know, they do the job. And I use that yellow paint pen to fill in the eyes. And I try to fix that on off button with a white and a black paint pen. And I just use that pick as a guide so I know where to place the eyes. And then I hot glue the frame back on. I really love how this turned out. Despite the challenges, or, or maybe because of the challenges, I just love it. I think it all goes so well together. Now this only cost me $1.25 to make, and that was for the sign. The rest of the stuff, the paint, the paint pens, I already had that on hand. And I'm just kind of showing you up a close. It's not perfect, y'all. It's not perfect, but you know what in life really is perfect? So I think it turned out super cute. DIY number three is gonna be a garland. I'm taking this little tag that I got from Hobby Lobby and painting it with the citrus green. This came in a set, but they also have like a similar shaped ones at Dollar Tree. Strand of beads actually came from Dollar Tree. And I haven't seen this particular type in a while, but right now Hobby Lobby has a large strand of beads in their fall section for 66% off. Y'all, that's a really good deal. So to paint these, I use a bamboo skewer that I got from Dollar Tree and I use a bit of painter's tape so that they don't slide off. And for this project, I'm putting on 12 beads. I'm painting them with citrus green and putting them on the skewer, at least for me, this allows me to kind of like get all the way around the beads pretty easily. And I use a smaller paintbrush and I start on the end that is not taped off. I paint the tops of those each bead first, and then I flip the skewer over and I paint the other side. And I set them in a pot that holds my paintbrushes to dry. And I take eight more beads and I repeat the process, painting them with Waverly chalk paint in the color white. And finally, I paint four beads with Waverly chalk paint in the color crimson. And again, doing the same process that I did the other two times. 
Everything has had a chance to dry, so I'm stringing up the beads onto some twine. I give myself some extra twine when I'm making a garland. I almost always put a small amount of tape on the end of the twine to make it pointy so it'll be easier to string the beads. And I pattern my beads this time three green, a white, hello captain, <laughs> a white, a red, and another white bead. And I repeat that three times. To make the tassel, I wrap the twine around my hand 20 times, 20-ish times, you know. And I push the beads to the other end so I have plenty of room to work. And I thread the twine from the beads through the top of my tassel and tie it tightly. And I cut a piece of twine off about four times the length of the tassel and I tie it towards the top to make the head of the tassel. And then I wrap it around the top a couple of times and knot it again. And I cut that piece longer so it will blend in with the tassel. And then I use masking tape to make a point to end on the twine with the, that the beads are on. And I'm going to thread that back through the beads. I think that this gives your tassel a much cleaner look and then the little tail is only about three or four beads long and on that last bead I add a dab of hot glue to hold it in place. Okay so I guess I put it put it to me hot gluing the um, beads but there you go that's how you do it. <laughs> So for that piece of twine that we used to tie off the head of the tassel, I pulled those down, those two tails down, hot glue them to a few of the strands that are close to them. And then to finish out the tassel, I cut the loops and then I trim it to the desired length that I want. For the other end of the garland, I'm just using a black paint pen to put on the Grinch's face on that tag shape and you'll see that on the garland I have a good amount of twine on that end. I always try to give myself enough wiggle room if I can. <laughs> now I like to make a slip knot to attach the tag or whatever shape I'm using to the garland and I try to get it as close to the beads but at the same time allowing them a bit of room to move around so the garland isn't like stiff or anything and I just like the tassel end I, I like to thread the tail of the twine back into the bead so you can't see it. And like I said, it gives it a cleaner look. And I do just a little bit more work on the Grinch's face and that's it. This garland turned out really well and I think it's a really good length too. The beads were from a longer strad from Dollar Tree so they were $1.25. The tag was from a set of 12 and I think, you know, it could cost me less than a dollar and I already had all the other stuff so yeah, I'd say for a total of $2.25 that's a pretty inexpensive project and turned out super cute. I was going to insert like some fun music or something, but I didn't. So, uh, but I did want to pop in and say hi, thanks for being here. And also let you know that I have a Facebook group, a crafting group called D uh, Crafty DIYs on a Budget. <laughs> Crafty DIYs on a Budget. I run that with my friend Sarah from GGB DIY. Link is going to be below. Hope you join. Post a craft or two, three, four, whatever you're working on. We'd love to see it. All right, back to the DIYs. I don't know why I keep pointing that way, but anyway. What can I say? I like book stacks. Although for the size tier trays that I have, these crates from Dollar Tree are just a wee bit too big, but I had it in my stash, so it'll work for this project, which is DIY number four. And I'm taping off the crate and painting the middle section with Waverly chalk paint in the color white. And the bottom section will be that folk art paint in the color citrus green. And the top section will be Waverly chalk paint in the color crimson. And I did use my Cricut to cut out this decal. The font is Green Eggs and Spam and I got it from defont.com and I just attach it to the crate. Fun fact though, <laughs> I actually had to redo this part because the first decal was too big for the space and yes, I'm using that permanent vinyl that I had other issues with earlier, but I did want this part to be more permanent so, you know, I also had to fix the C on the bottom part there. I wrap some twine around one end of the crate and hot glue it in place. And I attach a simple bow to the top with hot glue. And that's it y'all. Pretty simple and easy. The crate cost me $1.25 and the rest of the stuff is normal stuff I have on hand. So very budget friendly and it's pretty super cute. We're gonna wrap things up with DIY, this DIY, which is DIY number five. And I'm taking this wood ghost shape that I got from Dollar Tree and painting it with the same folk art paint in the color citrus green. 
And here's another Dollar Tree wood shape. And I'm filling in the hole at the top of this witch's hat with spackle that I got from Dollar Tree. And the bottom part is painted with Waverly chalk paint in the color white. And I sand down that area that had spackle on it. And I tape off the white portion so it doesn't get messed up. And I paint the top with Waverly chalk paint in the color crimson. And I was trying to show y'all that I didn't sand down that spackle enough. You can still kind of see it. It's not a big deal, but it's something to watch out for if you try this project. I'm taking a white paint pen and outlining the top of the hat as well as the bottom of the ghost to give it some more detail. Those dang dry paint pens. <laughs> And then I just hot glue the two pieces together and you see what's happening here? We're making another Grinch. I mean, I figured <laughs> y'all knew what I was going to be, but I think it's pretty cool that I could use two Halloween shapes for this. I saw this on Pinterest when I was, I saw the gnomes that I made in one of my last videos and I thought it was super cute. So take a black, black paint pen to add some detail to the white part of the hat. And again, you see me working with my dry paint pens, but I just keep having to dab them to make them work. And then for this Grinch, I, need, I just need to add the mouth with a black paint pen. And earlier I forgot to paint the bead for the nose, so I'm just doing that now. And I'm doing it the same way as I did the other beads for the garland, beaded garland thing. And then I just add a small dab of hot glue to attach the nose. And that's it. I love how this turned out too. So fun, cute, and easy. And as far as cost, I only used one piece of each of the wood shapes and at Dollar Tree they come in a set. So just say I bought two sets, that's a dollar twenty-five each. And the bead, I mean I'm not even gonna count that, but <laughs> let's just say two fifty total. Not bad for a super cute DIY. I think today's DIYs turned out great and um, it's hard to pick a favorite. But if you have a favorite, let me know in the comments below and let me know if you think I should try another Christmas movie themed DIY video. Um, I had fun with this one. I had a lot of fun with this one. Also, this just goes to show you that you don't always have to have like Cricut or some kind of fancy tools like that. You can make super cute DIYs that turn out great on a budget. So there you go. That, that's the lesson for today. But thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate the company while I craft and create, and I hope you had a good time too. Don't forget, like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you wanna follow me on social media like TikTok, Instagram, here on YouTube, my handle is Our Gray House, but just don't follow me in real life though, because that's creepy. Bye.